I'm here at the Stonewall Confederate Cemetery in Griffin, Georgia, and surrounding me are 504 Confederate graves and one Union. These are men who were being treated for their wounds at a local hospital after the Battle of Atlanta and the slaughter at Jonesboro, which was a very one-sided battle. Here is the one Union grave actually in the cemetery. Nathan Kellogg, who was 18 when he was mustered into service with the 85th Regiment of Illinois Infantry. He was a corporal and he was part of this regiment's founding and he was erroneously reported as being mustered out of service after the end of the war, but he was actually taken at the Battle of Peachtree Creek during a uh, exchange, he was wounded and he died here at the hospital, basically a prisoner. Now, this town, Griffin, Georgia, was very important to the Confederate war effort in the state of Georgia because of its proximity to Camp Milner and Camp Stevens. So if you were actually joining, you would very likely pass through this town. It was a railroad nexus on the Macon Railroad, and during the march to the sea, it looked like Sherman's men were going to make a move on the town because they were based up at Lovejoy Station. And just as they were moving in, 2,800 militiamen assembled to defend the hospital, and Sherman likely had some word of this, so they managed to break off and head towards Indian Springs, sparing the town. Now, it was here in town that General Stoneman's captured horses were given to the famed Kentucky Orphan Brigade, where they became a mounted cavalry unit. And it was also here that General Wheeler set up his, basically, headquarters during the march to the sea. And this is the Confederate Cemetery in Griffin, Georgia. I think it's interesting because up here, you've actually got an unknown soldier from World War I, but you have a marker here. Griffin was the headquarters of Fighting Joe Wheeler, a Confederate officer who desperately tried to stop Sherman's march to the sea. He countered him where he could, but by that point, the war was already lost. And surrounding me, the cemetery was erected in the late 1860s after the war and finally dedicated to the Confederacy. And like many cemeteries associated with the battles of Atlanta and Jonesboro, this has become a lasting monument to really what amounted specifically in Jonesboro to a slaughter. And there's a couple of interesting graves here I'd like to talk about. Near the back of the cemetery, you have William A. Hughes of the 1st Tennessee Infantry, who received the Confederate Medal of Honor at the Battle of Kennesaw Mountain. One of his friends had discharged his rifle into two Union men, killing them both. And as he was reloading, he reported that a Union man rushed him and said, you've killed my two brothers, now I've got you. And apparently William Hughes rushed up and grabbed the end of this man's rifle and it discharged into his arm, mortally wounding him. And for this, he was given the Medal of Honor for his service at Kennesaw Mountain. And because many of these men actually died at the hospital in Griffin, Georgia, which was safe from Sherman's march to the sea, most of them are actually known, unlike other cemeteries in Jonesboro, where the vast majority have no known name. And some of these graves are actually originals because the South cares for their war dead. And these would be some of the original gravestones. And the cemetery here really began in 1865 by the Ladies Memorial Association of Griffin, Georgia.